Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, I'll be unboxing this. This is the Viper Spectra XS 1500 Grow Light. Let's get to unboxing the light. All right, so in the box we have the light, an American power cable. Uh, this one I'll just be changing with an Australian. Uh, as you can see, it's just a computer port cable, hangers, and two rope ratchets, as well as a full instruction booklet and a have your say warranty card. Nice. All right, so let's get to reviewing the product. So for those of you who are unaware, I reviewed Viper Spectra's P2000 in a previous video of September of this year, 2020. This light answers all of my requests for that light. Here's a quick recap. I'd really like to see a version of this with uh, meanwhile drivers and uh, Samsung horticultural LEDs, that would just make it, you know, the pinnacle of LED lighting. Now, apart from the Samsung LM301H LEDs, this light has answered every request. It is pretty much the perfect incarnation of my ideal light. So this light is a 150 watt fanless LED grow light. It's full spectrum. It covers a 2.5 by 2.5 veg area and a two by two flower area. The light itself has 288 surface mounted diode LED chips, 180 being Samsung 3000K warm white diodes, 92 Samsung 5000K blue white diodes, 15 660 nanometer red diodes, and one 730 nanometer infrared diode. The light is passively cooled on a finned heat sink. Now, what that means is on each of the fins, you get exponentially more surface area for the light to passively cool over. Uh, this is why finned heat sinks are used on the back of many heat sink applications. The expanded surface area allows heat to dissipate faster and being anodized aluminium, this also helps as well. It has a meanwhile well driver, but this driver is actually a HLG series driver and they claim that this driver has 94% efficiency. Now this is compared to the 91% efficiency in the XLG series from Meanwell that is used on most grow lights at the moment. The light has a dimmable toggle switch, which dims from 5% all the way up to 100%. And over the top of the LED diodes is a waterproof coating, uh, which helps protect the diodes. Okay, now that we've discussed the light, we can put a par meter under it and see how it performs in a par test. Come on. Watch two or two. That's. Oi, get off! Get out! Go on. Bloody hell. Right, guys. No. Now, to keep this review consistent with my other reviews, I'm going to do the efficacy in uh, one by 1.2 uh, square meter area. However, the actual recommended flowering area would be about this size, which is uh, two by two foot, uh, or this size here. 
Uh, and that's what their efficacy would be measured on. The efficacy will be higher in that area, but to give the consistency throughout the reviews, I'm going to still measure the efficacy within this area. So the watt draw is exactly 150. So I'm just putting tape on the driver and the heat sink. This is gonna be really hard to get tape on so that the infrared gun can pick up the heat coming off the aluminum surface. So the driver itself is 40 degrees Celsius, which is 104.5 degrees Fahrenheit. The fin is 50 degrees Celsius, which is 123.4 degrees Fahrenheit. And the external of the heat sink is 30 degrees Celsius, which is 86.9 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see how those internal fins really work to put out the heat in this heat sink. Okay, so it's time to look at the PAR results for the Viper Spectra XS1500, and they're pretty impressive. So the 12 inch height uh, was 251 on average, and we times that by 1.2, then divide by the watt draw of 150, and we get an efficacy of two micromoles per joule. So this is a light with one of the highest efficacies that I've tested here on Huchos. I'm really excited to put this over plants and I've got some really nice grows coming up with this light. So links in the description to where you can purchase the light and I'll see you next time. Happy hydroponicking. Cheers. You're a menace, mate. <laughs>